Um, it has been a rough couple of weeks in, in many ways. So, so give us sort of the feeling, the tone of your dad today as he looks ahead to tonight. Well, he feels great, and I feel great. I was just in Ohio for the last two days, and I can tell you the amount of love that we feel is incredible. I mean, you couldn't drive a mile without seeing, you know, a dozen Trump signs. It's unbelievable. And everywhere we go, we feel the same way. And, you know, I find it very sad when you look at the emails and you hear what Henry was just saying, that it's really not being covered. I mean, it's just really not being covered. It's so sad. You have Donna Brazil giving Hillary Clinton the questions, the debates ahead of time. I mean, some of the stuff that's happening is truly, truly sick. Some of the things that they're saying, they're making fun of evangelicals. They're making fun of Christians. They're mocking, quote unquote, needy Latinos. No one's talking about it. You see these videos that have been coming out over the last couple of days where a person who worked for the DNC, a person who worked for the Democrats, who was in the White House 339 times, is bragging on a hidden camera about how he was inciting violence at all the Trump rallies, at the Trump rally in Chicago, which you remember we had to cancel. I mean, he, inciting violence. No one's talking about the fact that somebody threw a Molotov cocktail through a window at one of the RNC offices in North Carolina. Somebody just threw well, a brick. We, we have been reporting, reporting on some that. of that, though. But it's your father's responsibility in this campaign to prosecute the case, perhaps as you do now or against Hillary Clinton. What is his approach into tonight's final debate. Oh, believe me, he'll prosecute the case, and he can prosecute it better than anybody, and you saw that, quite frankly, in the second debate. Hillary Clinton can't stand on her track record. She just can't. She promised upstate New York, and you all know the story, she promised upstate New York 200,000 jobs when she was senator. She didn't deliver a single job to upstate New York. Now she's running around claiming that she's going to create 10 million new jobs across the United States. If she couldn't create one job while she was senator in New York, how could she create 10 million for this country. If you look at Syria, if you look at Libya, if you look at the entire Middle East, her foreign policy has cost this nation six trillion dollars, thousands and thousands of lives, and ISIS is worse than it's ever been. I mean, the problems that we have, the civil wars that we have in these countries are worse than they've ever been. Her foreign policy is horrible. Her track record as, as a politician for 35 years, longer than I've been alive, is horrible. So her only game plan is to attack my father and spend special interest money, quite about three quarters of a billion dollars of special interest money going after him in negative ads. And I find it very, very sad. And I think the media, quite frankly, um, has been on her side the entire time. All right. Well, one story that the media has spent quite a bit of time on is, are these stories about, about women. Um, when you look at the poll numbers, just, you know, in a, a very sort of um, practical way, he needs to make up ground with, with women. How will he do that tonight? How will he reassure women who perhaps were with him? Now, the, the, his solid supporters haven't gone anywhere, and that's, that's very clear. They are with him. Um, but he needs to extend uh, some reassurance to women that may have drifted because of these stories. Listen, he's going to assure people that, you know, his policies are, are what's best for this country. Our country has been totally left behind. We've got $20 trillion worth of debt. We have an educational system in this country that's ranked 30th in the world. You don't even hear our politicians talking about it. We have an educational system that's ranked 30th in the world. Reading comprehension is 34th. Math skills is 37. People aren't even talking about it. Median income in this country hasn't gone up in 15 years. People are making less money today than they did 15 years ago. You have Obamacare that's adding such a great expense to everybody's life. And Hillary's saying, oh, well, maybe we could tweak it a little bit and make it work. Obamacare. It doesn't work. It just You're saying doesn't the message work. for men is the same as the message for women. He won't make any particular outreach um, to sort of calming some of those waters with, with women voters in particular. I just think they should be about Americans. What we want what's best for Americans. If you look at Hillary Clinton's track record with women, the average female executive at the Clinton Foundation makes $80,000 a year less than the average male executive at the Clinton Foundation. So, so when, is, when is she going to start practicing what she preaches? And, and I just find the hypocrisy incredible. I find the hypocrisy truly, truly incredible. We're going to see what these battleground states stack up in about 30 minutes, and they're very interesting, too. A lot of them were within the margin of error. However, nationally, a lot of the polling suggests that you're behind. Um, and Kellyanne Conway was talking last hour, the campaign chair, about a comeback, and that America loves a comeback. Do you see at this point, 20 days out, as uh, a campaign that needs a comeback in order to win. Do you concede that you're trailing today or not? Listen, I've been on your show a million times. And since the, the day we entered the race, meaning before the primaries, you know, last June, I've been telling you guys we're going to win this thing. And I fully, fully, fully believe that. I'm in all the states. I'm in Pennsylvania. I'm in Ohio. I'm in North Carolina. I was just in Colorado. I was just in Maine. I mean, I'm all, in all these swing states. And you see the love. I mean, I've got 500,000 people coming out to see me speak, and I'm not, I'm not the candidate. I'm a civilian in this process. I want nothing to do with politics once this thing is over because I, I find so many of the politicians truly horrible people. 
Um, but, I mean, you see a thousand people come out to see me speak. We have a movement. I mean, people want their country back. People want America back. They're sick of getting ripped off um, by overseas co you know, countries. They're sick of us losing our jobs. They're sick of us losing our manufacturing. They're sick of health care costs going through the roof. They're sick of bad educational systems. They're sick of the 22 veterans who take their own lives every day, you know, because we have a VA that's failing our military. There's a, there's a so you're then. talking a lot about the excuse me the, about the issues, and I think you know we had Mercedes Schlapp on. Uh, she's an advisor to Republican candidates. You know, she said I'd like to see him spend about 10 percent talking about the rig the rigged election issue, but she felt like there's been too much on it, too many tweets on it, too much focus on it that it makes it feel like it's about him being personally upset that he's not doing as well as he wants to, and that it needs to be more about the, these issues. Are we going to see him you know pivot away from him and more towards what you're talking about tonight? Well, I think the great thing about quite frankly is you know. Chris is he's going to actually ask those questions. I think in the first debate, you didn't see any of the hard questions asked. And there wasn't even a question about her emails or the Clinton Foundation. The Clinton Foundation might be one of the greatest Ponzi schemes in the charitable world. And again, no one wants to talk about it. And it's very sad that the media, most of the media, I'm not, I'm not throwing this on, on you guys, but most of the media does want to prosecute that case. They don't even want to talk John about Her this. John and Harwood just spelled it out in an email to uh, John Podesta that we yeah. just saw. And, 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 and try seeing that on any other channel. And try seeing that on any other channel. I mean, the problem is when... Hillary whistles, the rest of the media dances, and it's, uh, it's very, very sad. And you, you flew in last night? Yeah, I just flew in from Ohio. Um, and uh, Kellyanne said your father was doing debate prep last night. Do you have any more information on that or yeah, details he's, about he's, how that went or how it was set up? He's doing debate prep. He's doing a lot of debate prep. I mean, he takes it very, very seriously, and he's always taken it incredibly seriously. And you saw how well he did in the second debate. I mean, there's, there's no question he won that debate. And, and, and we, we were told that after debate number one, he went back and watched it. Is that true? Uh, I'm sure he did. Uh, I'm sure he did. I, I, I don't actually know. I never asked that question, but I'm, I'm sure he did. Uh, the reason I ask that is because the setup tonight is exactly as it was yeah. three and, and a half weeks ago. And by the way, I think that setup, I, I think the kind of open forum with people asking questions, I think that's a great thing for him. I mean, he, he relates to the blue collar worker so well. He relates to average Americans so well. I mean, that's who we deal with every single day as we operate our business, whether it be contractors or this or that. He's always just had this, this great warmth with, with people, and he responds very, very well in that setting. And I think on the flip side, I don't think Hillary does at all. I mean, she's in this kind of political elite. She's in, you know, a, a white marble office in Washington, D.C. I think she's very, very disconnected from everyday Americans. And I think he actually excels in that form. Thank you for your time, Eric. It's a big opportunity uh, yep. for him, and we will see how it goes. Thank you, Eric. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Always good to have you with us.